This is an orthokeratology case where the patient has recently switched to semi-scleral lenses and after two lens designs we're still getting under treatment and the post-ray topography shows a uh, not very well delineated uh, reverse curve or treatment zone underneath the lens and the patient is also undercorrected. So uh, with this kind of appearance what I'm guessing is that the lens is vaulting a little bit too much and um, not uh, getting the fluid forces that we need to um, produce the refractive results we're after. So I'm going to bring up the lens. And here's the lens that the patient is wearing right now. Um, one thing that catches my attention is we have the white ring where the reverse curve is, but we have another kind of light blue ring around here, and this indicates a uh, steepening of the base curve or the not really the base curve at that point, but there's a steepening of the curve on the F2 surface. And I think what's happening is the lens is curving down and bearing down on the cornea, and lifting it away from the cornea where we need um, better contact at the back of the reverse curve and also to, to a maybe slightly lesser degree, but still necessary at the apex of the cornea. So um, I think this outer ring is very likely a result of this ring on the topography, which comes from the patient's uh, lid indentation. So uh, in this case, what I would recommend is go into the original topography and go ahead and edit out or delete this portion, these portions of the rings. Uh, the lid mark here, the lid mark down below. Also this really flat periphery here, if these mires are a little bit um, off the cornea, I think we can get rid of those. And by doing so, we should get a pretty uh, different looking lens from Wave, and I can bring that up. So here now we have the baseline topography with those areas deleted. Um, it is deleting a lot of data from the map, so uh, I would feel safer for my own patient by um, retaining the original map. So you can, through a series of exports and edits, you can um, have the original maps and then also a second set of edited maps that um, you can build a new lens off of. Um, if you have any questions about those specifics, feel free to let me know in an email and I can show you how to do that. But um, this will allow us to have an edited, but as well as the original ones just for reference. Um, because I believe once you delete those rings, then that data is lost. So going off of this new map, I designed a lens with uh, very similar parameters. And I can bring those two up. So on the right side is the lens that the patient has right now. And on the left side is a lens designed off of the edited topography. And you can see that the um, corneal topography view in the wave window is a little bit different. We don't have that second ring anymore. You can see that after the reverse curve, that the lens just flattens out. And if we look at the sagittal depth of the lens, we're looking at a new lens now. That's about uh, 3065 versus 3266. So about 200 microns uh, more shallow or with less, uh, less sag than the original lens. And this lens will settle much closer to the cornea and hopefully get the results we're looking for. Last thing I'll do is use one of Wave's newer features, which is the compare feature here. And now we can kind of see the tier layer for both lenses. The blue line is the proposed new lens. The black line is the patient's current lens. You'll see that there's a little bit of difference at the back surface of the optic zone here. But the really big difference is out in the periphery of the lens. Now I should add in also that some of this difference in the periphery is because I went with the 40 degree edge angle. Uh, the original was around 43. And um, I think 43 is a little bit steep that will kind of prop the lens up and uh, lift it away from the cornea even more. Uh, I'm using, on a 13.9 lens, I'm usually using usually around a 39 or 40. Um, I verify that with OCT. If you have one that does anterior segment imaging, I think that's the best way to see what the edge relationship is for the lens on the eye. 
If not, then the uh, slit lamp techniques that most uh, everyone is using is fine too. But um, even if I went with the original edge angle 43 um, by redesigning the lens with the edited topography, we will end up with a lens with about 100 microns less sagittal depth. Um, we're getting about 200 total microns less because of the additional change to the edge angle. But um, I think going with 40, at least for this redesign, should work well. So this lens is going to um, be much flatter, especially out in the periphery, which should allow the apex of the lens as well as the back of the optic zone settle down onto the cornea. On the notes that were accompanying the clinical support request, you had mentioned uh, bubbles in the treatment channel as well as the OZ. Um, definitely if you're getting bubbles in the optic zone at the center of the lens, then we're getting way too much um, vault and that lens needs to be fitted closer to the cornea, which this redesign should achieve. So hope this makes sense and um, that uh, the changes work out for your patient. If you have any questions, please do follow up with an email. Otherwise, best of luck and thanks for watching.